Hey there, I am Barb Higgins, and this is A Thousand Tiny Steps. In this podcast, I share my stories of love, loss, triumph, and tragedy as I continue to retrace my steps onto what led to the death of my daughter, Molly. By doing so, I hope to not only help myself, but to bring purpose and possibility to those who listen. If you are ready to laugh, cry, shake your head in disbelief, then tie, buckle, face up, or slip on your shoes, and join me as we begin our thousand tiny steps. Hey everybody, Barb Higgins here, welcoming you to episode 125 of A Thousand Tiny Steps. So if you're watching me, you're probably wondering, where the hell are you? Well, where I am is Concord High School in the town that I live in. In the CCTV office, it's our local public broadcasting TV station. And Josh and the folks here were kind enough to let me record a podcast episode in an actual TV studio. So I'm wicked excited. I have some friends with me today. So to my left here is Jen Spidell. So Jen and I met about exactly 23 years ago, maybe. Jen teaches here at the high school and like a lot of teachers does 9,000 other things. With us today here is Milo and Ada. So Milo and Ada and I are brand new. We don't really know each other. The reason I invited these three beautiful people here is to talk about the sustainable, so CHS Sustainable Thrift Shop. Thank you. So that's a mouthful. Basically what it is, is a classroom full of clothes and it's all donated from a lot of people in the community. And I think one of the hopes and one of the sort of byproducts of having this kind of thing in a vibrant high school is that people come in and see it's there, they get something, they go home, they look in their closet, they take a bunch of stuff they don't wear anymore and they bring it back. So we end up helping a lot of people in a really easy way. This is about a year and a half in, two years maybe? This is our second year. Yeah, the second. So another great thing that Jen does is she enlists the support of students. And so Ada and Milo were willing to come on and talk a little bit about it as well. Tell my listeners, what made you think of doing this? And just a little bit of background as to how it sort of came to you. Okay. And I don't even know if you two know this. So last year, Rose, she's at BU. And one of the moments where she was like, mom, it's so different here was at the end of every semester. So students who are international or flying from California or just long distances, rather than packing up their stuff, often throw it in these big barrels, huge, huge barrels, and people can pick through it. So what she would do was pulling out amazing stuff. And she kept saying, mom, there was, there was this coat, there was this dress. So she started bringing this stuff home. And then the following year, so this was a couple years ago, the following year, her girlfriend, who is in a Greek organization, and I think they're calling it a fraternity, but it's co-ed, had something called a trash in show. And they took thrifted items, depending on their you know, sewing abilities, and, and revamped them to some extent, had a fashion show, and it was a fundraiser for the fraternity. In conjunction with this, there was another teacher here, Christina Perry, who had been contacted by a local woman who had stuff. And she was a little vague on what she had, just that we needed lots of vehicles. Christina and I had the discussion, what are we gonna do with this stuff? And it was like, all right, let's, let's see if the kids want it. So we started a pop-up. So during our win, which is what I need, So students determine what that 45 minute means to them, whether it's, you know, getting help in science or math or they need clothing. So we started to organize it and pull it all out during these win events. And we had over all of the events, we had over 900 students participate. Those events included a prom fashion show. They included a senior event. We collected some things that you might need when you move out, pots and pans hair dryer because you can't take mom's hair dryer with you. So at that point, I started talking to our administration about needing a space because it was way too much work and it wasn't equitable. So if you needed science help and you needed math help, you weren't ever going to be able to come see me in the thrift shop. Now that we have a permanent space, which opened in October, we are open Tuesday through Friday during lunches and students can come in and, and take items. And over that process, I met you last year through the pop-up. So if you want to talk a little bit about that. I don't think I need that many clothes. Like I live in a quite privileged household. 
so I was doing it for my partner because she would need the clothes sometimes. She is like lower middle class. And so she found out about it and was like, hey, we should go to this. And I did occasionally need help in classes. The thing is, I didn't have enough motivation to actually go and get help and sit in a, like a quiet classroom and actually do my work. So I would go with her and she would find all these clothes and I'd be like, hey, I, don't, I don't need anything. You know, she was like, oh, just, just take a shirt or something like that. I'll get you something if you don't grab anything. So I, I did grab like like one or two things that I needed. And I was like, oh, well, like, I don't really need this, but it is kind of fun. But I think like anyone who does actually need clothes, they wouldn't like reach out for help. Like there's stigmas against yes. like reaching yes. out and actually asking for clothes. Yeah. yeah. And like if you're poor, you don't want to say that. So like, I feel like even the privileged kids going kind of helps with that because everyone is going to the thrift shop and picking out a couple of clothes that they like. So those who actually need it have the opportunity, have the chance. Yeah, they'd to be actually... more willing to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was, I think you shared a similar story with, yeah. with that. I gave a bunch of my daughter Gracie's clothes and, you know, she gets all the nice stuff and everything else. And you were talking about someone snagging those right up. And I remember you were thinking she probably doesn't need them and came back the next day with a bunch of stuff that she'd outgrown or didn't wear anymore. And it's like, oh, like, and then what that does is it allows somebody that would never be able to afford snarky Abercrombie and Fitch. I call it Abercrombie and Fitch. You know, they would never be able to afford that, right? Because they just wouldn't. But if she's going in and wearing it and saying, oh, I got this at the thrift store, you should go. Mm -hmm. It does. It gives permission for sort of anyone to go. One of the important pieces to this, too, which had to do with that, that idea that BU was, you know, students were putting stuff in, is that if we continue to consume at the rate that we're consuming, we're not gonna have a planet to live on anymore because it's just gonna be textile. So this idea of sustainability right. is even more important that your generation learns that things aren't disposable, that maybe we can you know, reuse things in a way that maybe the 80s and the 90s, so your parents and grandparents consumed and we're learning that that, that might not have been the best path to have taken for our future. So that idea of, you know, spending a little more on something, you know, maybe if you spend $150 on a sweater, but you're going to wear it for the next 20 years, then that's an investment. So you're looking at it as an investment. And then instead of having a humongous closet full of clothes and you wear six outfits. Oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> but the, they're the same clothes that you'd recognize all the <laughs> outfits from 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so that you, you're thinking about what's my impact on the planet by getting a t-shirt for every single holiday we could possibly have and a sweatshirt for every single holiday. Ada, I met this year. So do you want to tell us about your experience? My experience is a bit funny in that aspect because I got into sewing at a very young age with my grandma. She taught me a lot and she still is because I'm still learning. We like to sew clothes together and it's just really nice for me to be able to have that time with her. But also it really helps me out in my future because when I'm older, I want to be able to do things that help out more plus sized people because a lot of the time they don't like showing their bodies or they don't like the idea of having something for them, made just for them. Right. And I want to change that as much as possibly, as much as I possibly can. Because a lot of my clothing I've had to wear was plus size because whenever I go to these really fancy brands, they all mark. They size it down. Yeah, they yeah. size it down. Right. And it's ridiculous right. for someone like me who's more midsize, not exactly plus size. Right. But that's kind of what inspired me to start getting into sewing more as I started to grow up was because... In my future, I want to start sewing and making clothes. Making clothes, designing clothes. Can yeah. help enhance a plus-size girl's beauty. I don't want somebody to be scared of showing their skin just because they're a little bit bigger than someone else. So this is completely unrelated to you, but I, I just did a podcast interview with, with the old lady CrossFit lady I was talking about. Her name is Lita. She has an amazing life story. And she interviews people, and, and she likes to interview people with, a, with an interesting background. And her, the recent person she had 
was a designer for women's clothing and she makes clothes that, you know, you think of going to the gym, right? All these athletic companies typically can, can be run by men and everything's just small, medium, large, maybe an extra large. And sometimes I'm wearing an extra large and I'm not extra large, right? So she noticed this that she went to all these trade shows and she's like, you know what? I'm just done with this. So she'll have a handful of smaller sizes but she's modified the shape of the shorts and the, and the leggings and the sports bras. And she's just really gone around to gyms and talked to really big women that are working out that, you know, have a lot of boobs to support and all the ways that make can make people feel uncomfortable. And she has this whole line now and she's selling out all the time because it's the same thing. You know, these women want to feel comfortable when they go to the gym. They don't want to feel embarrassed or like they're trying to squeeze into something or that no gym clothes look good on them, so they're going to wear T-shirts and shorts. Exactly. And it's very hard for someone that's plus-sized or even maybe mid-sized to go to all these, like, really fancy brands and just find that it's they, not for them. Yeah, that's not for them. That if they want to be in these pretty clothes, that they have to be small. In right. hourglass. So, right. Yeah, an hourglass. I'm or stick. I have no shade. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. I just find that so unfair and I find it so horrible. On a daily basis, I will wear sequins and I will just go all out because I am not afraid of myself. Yeah. And I want other people to feel that. That's awesome. So in this, is there a lot of, do you have a good amount of clothing donated that are, that are in bigger sizes or do you no. find that you get lots of No, smaller? I actually just put that out today that we have... Some plus size clothing. And then what ends up happening is the plus size clothing isn't very attractive. No, I know. It's moo's. Yeah. It's like, that's exciting. And it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's like just trying to cover up. It's like basically our community, well, not our community, but communities out there, fashion designers want to make stuff for smaller people and they want to make the plus size and mid size people look less noticeable. And I find that absolutely horrible. And I find it one of the worst things to possibly do to a person. Yeah. So not supporting new clothes, back to the sort of the sustainability mm -hmm. piece. So I have this new baby, Jack, and he's had maybe five new things. Every toy he's had was somebody else's toy. I have not, never bought a new stroller. You have to buy car seats new because of the laws, but yeah. otherwise, nothing. And he had a, his pack and play with somebody else's. We sleep in Coach Ludie's bed, like nothing new. So in terms of some clothing issues around style and size and fashion and price and all of it, if we can really push the thrifting industry, so, you know, bring your old clothes in and look around and bring someone else's old clothes home, we're eliminating sales in companies that, that can sort of push that sort of agenda. I used to go, actually, when I lived in Boston, mm -hmm. I used to go to, I never bought new because I loved all the cool old stuff, which was just Exactly. Yeah. The other thing, you're a sewer. You like to sew. Yes, I'm I so do. envious. Sew all the time, too. You know, it's funny for me because I've always loved to sew and I've always loved using, like, newer fabrics. Yeah. But as I've gotten older, I've started to realize that there are other places where I can get these beautiful fabrics. Like, there are these thrift yeah, Places beautiful dresses everywhere. That you cut up or curtains or whatever. Exactly. And I'm starting to realize this. And it's been a very interesting experience for me to see that there's a different world out there that isn't the world that I was taught. Right. Mm -hmm. You came in looking at sort of the, the different class levels, meaning income levels of people and mm -hmm. how a thrift store can equalize, you know, mm -hmm. take away the stigma of I can't afford that. Well, everyone can because it's free. And you've brought up the idea and the issue around the styles that are pushed and, and, the, and the whole differences in sizing and how people feel about themselves. Part of the sustainability thrift shop and all that went into it is learning experiences for kids. So I know Concord High School, actually education in general, and I think COVID had a lot to do with this as a teacher and a school board member. Suddenly we, we weren't sitting in classrooms and we still had to learn. And so I find that a lot of educational programs now involve getting kids out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that, that you've been able to sort of facilitate for the kids that are participating, like that are either credit earning or meet some sort of competency or guideline? So we're working on that where we just opened in October with the full time. I've been speaking to kids and I know Ada's interested in earning some English competency. So because I'm a certified English teacher, I can help to take the things she's interested in, research, 
write about them, present them, and do all of those pieces and earn English credit so that, you know, maybe she, maybe poetry is your thing, but maybe it's not your thing. Where you're looking at a career pathways, which is a great position to be in at your age, we can help develop that. So we are in the early stages. So that's something that'll probably happen next year yeah. or maybe possibly next semester. But can the students that come work earn community service hours? So nobody's come to me about that yet, but yeah. it's absolutely an option. Yeah. So as with anything in a public school district, nothing is easy, even when it should be. Jen, as you were trying to get this going, you have all the sort of fluffy support. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, we support it. We support it. And then it comes time to get a classroom and where are we going to do it and what goes into it? And then suddenly all these roadblocks come up. So what are some, what are, what are some of the challenges that, have, that you've gone through to get to that amazing classroom full of clothes? Well, the biggest challenge is we were changing administrators. So, you know, brand new job starting in July, Tim Herbert. Had, I was pushing, you know, can I have classroom? Can I have classroom? And I'm sure I was one of, you know, 9,000 people yes, <laughs> asking for space. So he, he told me that he would definitely find something. And it was just going to take some time. That came true in October. And it's really the perfect classroom. It's in a, the best spot so that students can get there from lunch. Yeah, it's um, right there. Mm -hmm. And it's not, there's not a lot of walk by traffic. Nope. So if somebody did feel funny being in there, it's not like they're on display for everyone right. to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. But we have gotten a lot of traffic. Like I was sick last week, couldn't get off the couch, couldn't stop coughing, couldn't talk, and bags piled up. So we, we continue to get donations. And when I was back this week, students were like, I tried to come and it was closed. And so it was missed. Yes. Um, so that wow. was awesome. So another huge roadblock is having an adult in the space during lunch. So, so do you spend two hours in there? I spend a lot of time in there. <laughs> so there are several adults within the building who have been, you know, from the beginning helping out. Yeah. Beth York has been amazing. She would help me drag all the stuff out for the pop-up. And then, of course, Dave, my husband, is super helpful. And then I've slowly but surely been recruiting people to come and, you know, can you just do a half an hour? Mm -hmm. And then the other group is the transition class, and they've been coming in. So they come in sometimes with an aide, sometimes with a teacher. But we still don't have full coverage for those period six times and yeah. it would be nice not to be in there two hours period five too so that's a yeah, huge that roadblock a, yeah yeah right, right yeah explain transition class to me a little bit so students who have graduated from the program but are not 22 and have an IEP are still eligible for services and they work on adult services so and having life skills yep having students come in right now I'm working with the student to sort of look at they are also interested in the fashion industry. What capacity can they participate? So what does it look like to work in retail? What does it look like to work in a thrifting or an upscale thrifting vintage type scenario and coming up with goals that go along with that and then accommodations, everything that we need to support the student for the, the goal that they're, right. they're hoping to accomplish. To see what people like and what people don't like. Yeah. 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 yeah now, so do you guys work shifts or are you mostly behind the scenes hanging things up and unpacking like what do, you, what do you do so i come in with my partner every single lunch and even if they're not there we sit outside the room and have lunch there because oh. it's it's nice and quiet and we get to like watch yeah. videos on youtube or something and it's a safe spot yeah, yeah. it's a safe spot because again not a lot of traffic yeah. guys around there yeah we will occasionally like come in and there'll be bags of clothes and we'll fold it yeah, yeah. yeah. just go through it sort yeah. it out do you have a favorite task I mean, I do enjoy organizing, so... <laughs> I like building laundry. We, we keep, like, changing the layout of things. Mm -hmm. What do you tend to do in there, and what do you, what's your favorite thing to do? I like to toss the clothes off the backs. And <laughs> I like to throw them on the ground in, like, certain piles, and I will, like, say, this is this, this is this, these do not go together, this goes over here. And I'll kind of, like, just make, like, these piles, and then I am not a huge person of cleaning up. Oh, you must love her. Yeah, I, I just make the mess. <laughs> right. I just make the mess. But yeah, that's one of my favorite things to do. I just like to organize. I am more of a styling and I'm more of like a styling and put together kind of person. Yeah. Like in my closet, I will like go into my closet and be like, okay, this I'm going to wear tomorrow with this and this and then this I'm going to wear that with that. And then like my mind starts clicking of like all of these like amazing ideas that like I can just explore and just 
every day I have a new combination of clothing that I wear. Here. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine Jen looking at you two and saying, okay, I'm going to send her over there with that big pile of bags and she can rip the plastic and get it all out, <laughs> yeah. spread it out. Mm -hmm. And then Milo's going to go over and pick it up and put it where it goes mm -hmm. because, or make piles and then they can, yeah. That's My partner cool. likes folding the clothes, but she's not very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll be like, no, you kind of have to like fold it up. Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, like I am not good at folding clothes. Like just like in general, I actually don't know how. Right. Well, there's a million ways you can do it. Yeah. A thrift shop is a good way, a good place to learn how to fold, fold clothes. But I mean, except like, that what we've learned is that if things are folded and put on a table, students will not don't go touch them. it. Yeah, they need to be hung up. They want to just yeah. look. I was about to say we're, they're mainly on hooks. So they need clothing clickbait. They don't want to have to. They want to go look <laughs> at it. They don't want to have to go do fifty yeah. steps to see if they like it. Also, I feel guilty like taking a shirt from the bottom of a pile because yeah. now every shirt is unfolded. <laughs> <laughs> like that was a thing with last year is it would be out on tables and stuff like that yeah. and boxes and like people would be digging through and like some people would be like, Oh my bad and fold it back up. But it was just like a just mess a mess by then. It was. Yeah. And then we would have like people helping out and they would come back like yeah. and do laps and mm -hmm. fold clothes. Yeah. <laughs> In some ways that was more fun. Mm -hmm. but so much more work yeah. like because then we'd have to put everything away and then put it back and drag it out and we never knew, really knew what we had because right. there was no space to have it all out and to really look at it yeah what are the some of the most popular things like like i would say sweatshirts because like say, a yep. lot of the girls here and some of the men love like the sweatshirts mm -hmm. like i will see like every person come in and go straight to the sweatshirts well, of the 1,300 items we've given out since October, I think it was 600 of them were tops. Yeah. And I think probably 400 of tops were sweatshirts. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> lots and lots and lots of sweatshirts. How do you keep track of what goes? Like you're using really specific numbers well, for items. We have a chalkboard and we write down like tops, bottoms, other like general, general categories. Like just general yeah. categories. And when people like take something, they have to go and mark down. Just like put a tick yeah. on what they put. Yeah, like they're take supposed it. to. Or they're yeah. supposed to, yeah. Right next to that, we also have a wish list. Mm -hmm. Genius. Yeah. So the wish list, like people will like write down what they want or like they'll tell Ms. Spidell, this is what we want. Can you put it up on the wish list? And like we'll write down like what they want. And if we find something, I think we like save it and then they can like come and look to see if like if it, like that's what they want or if they want to keep looking. Well, we we I'm pretty sure reach out and be yeah. like, hey, does anyone have some yeah. of this that people don't want? Right. Yeah. So if they if I see them write it on the wish list, like let's say you write you want that green dress. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> then I'll know when it comes in. Ada, here's your green dress. Yeah. But if I'm not seeing who's doing it, so we need to tweak that a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's lots of little things like that that we need to sort of figure out to make it the most effective. Yeah. yeah. We're going to meet on Friday during WIN instead of having an event like in the past we had how to sew a bow tie, how to hem jeans, and then come up with new activities such as? Well, one of the people in the thrift shop mentioned teetotaler as maybe like a sponsor or like somebody that we can maybe plan an event with. And I said, well, they're an LGBTQ like pride enthusiastic like people huge supporter of acceptance yeah exactly yeah. so i thought why don't we do a pride fashion show where everybody chooses the color of their pride flag and wears it down the runway or the people who decide to join i didn't know <laughs> and and they don't know it either yet the teacher right. it well, was just one of the just, things that no, but, but, idea. this is how we get it out there now right because yeah. i have you know i have several hundred teachers yeah, yeah all are, 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 you're on the hook now. So if you're if you're in downtown Concord and you're on Main Street, it's, it's bright pink facade. It's the, the it's absolutely beautiful. It's a little there. Step in. Yeah, it's just like yeah. it's wonderful, and they do a lot of they do a lot of really fun fun events there. One of my motivations for having you all on here was that let's get people that have no connection to Concord High knowing what's going on here, mm -hmm. knowing about this this undertaking. knowing the real people that are doing it, not some article they read in some you know newsletter somewhere. So that, A, that opens the doors for support, whether it's financial or donations or whatever. And B, it just, it just opens the lines of communication around different events and things to do that you wouldn't necessarily assign to a thrift, a thrift store with clothing. But would it be possible for like, with like two toddler or something like that where 
we like for a day or something open the thrift shop on main street and open it outside of the school Mm -hmm. you know what would be really awesome in the past in different groups that i've worked with we did the market days Uh, so there's a there's a particular yeah a thing you can apply for so it doesn't cost the group so we could bring all of our stock down and you know i've there was another event somewhere in Massachusetts, I think, where you had to be under a certain age. And if you were under that certain age, you could get a free thing or two free things or whatever. And if you were above the age and you wanted something, then you made a donation. So we could open it up to the community where we bring our stuff, especially our summer stuff. Oh my goodness, we have so many summer things right now. And then you have all the summer stuff and then there's no one here to take it. So we could bring that down as a club, set up the booth, and then it's free for students. And if it's a donation for others like yeah and then if people wanted to donate stuff we would just have to have some pretty clear parameters because we need clean well taken care of well yeah well taken care of clothing that teenagers would like mm-hmm. so that's next semester's project too to sort of go through what we have to see what's been sitting for a while pull it out because maybe it's for mm-hmm. someone my age and not your age and what i found is that the variety of clothes that we have we have the variety of students to match them with. People, what I think is fantastic, you might not, and you might hate it. And then another person comes in, they're like, oh, but look at this. So we have such a nice diverse group that that there isn't too much of that. Right. So with some of the older person clothes, do you ever have students that would take things home for their parents? Yes, there's been several students that have come in and I, I suggest that to all students. We have kids clothing, so if People have siblings. I suggest that they go through that, bring stuff home. Siblings, grandparents. I did have a parent reach out to me who wants to come in. Their child isn't fantastic at being able to identify their own needs. Right. So I'm going to meet her here at some point and she's going to go through. So eventually I'd like to have, like maybe next year, we open a Saturday a month. We get some type of school bus transportation and families can come in. How do you get, like, how do you solicit donations? Who do you? Is it, is it sort of well enough known now that they just come or how do you? It's a little bit of that. So when I went back to my room after being in the thrift store today, there were a big stack of Christmas socks, brand new Christmas socks. So I don't know who that came from. So things just happened to, to find their way to me. Mm-hmm. I have that original woman who we met yes. this fall. It was house. Yep. Stuff. <laughs> yep. she, this is something that she's passionate about. She searches the stuff. She washes it. She folds it. She organizes it and we just have to pick it up. When I was sick last week and stuck on the couch, I thought, well, I'm going to look on Amazon Marketplace and see if I can find a rack because we had a rack that just went, ooh, <laughs> just completely died. And the came, slow death. Yeah, it was funny. And came across um, a man named Keith whose father um, had been part of Goodwill in some capacity working and he's our age. And so he spent his whole life sort of this idea right. of giving. And he met my husband and, and donated the two racks. So it was like the universe just provided, and they're so wonderful, the racks. Like, it's such a silly thing to get excited over, but they're the kind of racks, and now everybody can see what kind of jeans we have. Right, and it's like from a store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of store turnover in this town, and with the mall, well, it's empty, but I mean, those those empty stores aren't empty. There's hangers and all sorts of stuff in there. It would be... Interesting. Somebody should get on it and see who do I contact to see if I can get in there and get some of that stuff. So I have a foundation for my daughter, the Molly B Foundation, and one of my favorite fundraisers to do. I mean, let me define favorite because yeah. it's a lot of work for not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But I do a, a clothing donation for Savers. And what I like about Savers is that's a for-profit company. They're not a nonprofit, but they don't throw away anything, nothing. Everything they get, they either take right out of the bag that you brought it in and hang it up and sell it. Or it's January here and they get all this summer stuff and it goes on a truck that's going to go to a Savers in Tallahassee, Florida. They have all manner of different recycling and other charities that take those things. It's amazing. So here's a for-profit company that's completely dedicated to not throwing anything away and to creating ease of shopping. But the prices there are incredibly cheap. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing it for a while because, because I'm exhausted. When people reach out to me and say, I have a trunk full of clothes, I'll, I'll say no. Take them to Concord High School. You can drop them off with me and I'll get them up the street to Jen. So that now we have this sort of another flow of clothing coming through, which is, you know, mm-hmm. I love it. But the other thing I liked, well, I'd go through all those bags and I have, I have some pretty nice stuff. 
that was donated. So when I first was working with Jen and I had some bags of stuff and was helping unload in October, it's just amazing. You go through, it's almost like you're reading somebody's diary. Like, here's a bag of my mother's clothes. And you go through and you look and you're like, huh? Like, I don't know. It's one of the things I like about used stuff is that there's a history to it. <laughs> What's coming up for you? And what are you looking for? Like, what are you looking for right now? Like winter coats, hats and mittens, do those things go? We had a lot of winter coats this fall and lots of kids got coats. Lots of kids got really nice coats. So I don't really makes a lot of people happy. Yes. So I've noticed that our coats are starting to, we're, yep, yeah, we're starting less asking for them and less, but I think that might be okay because I think so many students got coats that. Right, that they're in a good place. Right, that we might be okay. Things like hats, winter hats and gloves, we don't have a lot of those right now. Let's see, what else is... I we think, should get mannequin. Yeah, so yeah we, we'll be, we have one little dinky mannequin. Um, Mannequins, people, mannequin. no, mannequins. That We should probably actually change out. Yes, clothes off. she's been wearing the same fall outfit. For, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be little, my guess. You know, yes. my hunch is on some, not that we have beautiful weather coming, but get a pass and walk downtown or whatever and go to just just go to shops and say you know lots of little shops on main they might be willing to give up a mannequin sue from hilltop i had spoken to her this summer looking into january where it yeah. slows down a little bit you know maybe bringing some students down and and just talking to her about her business and yeah. she was very on board with wanting to come in and and talk to students so milo what year are you i am a junior a junior so do you have any ideas of what you want to do when you're done high school, or is it all still just a big cloud for you? Oh, well, I'm trying to whittle it down this year because I am in CRTC, which is Concord yep. Regional Tech Center, and yep. it's like the like career path classes. Amazing. Yeah. And I love arts. And so I'm you're in the graphic about, arts? Yeah, I'm in the graphic arts and creative media, of course. Would you go to school for that, like a college for that? Yes, or? and that's what's great about the, the CRTC is because a lot of colleges come in so I get to see what they look like, and they're talking to me. They're talking about arts and stuff like yeah. that, and I get to see the wide range. Now, what year are you, Ada? Oh, I'm a sophomore. Sophomore. So you have years ahead of you. <laughs> Sorry. You're so you so mentioned young. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned you like sewing. So do do you think that you'll use that? That will be a part of what you want to do: designing clothes, designing clothes, thrifting altering clothes, clothes lifting. And also something else I'm really interested in is makeup and cosmetology. And one thing I've always really wanted to do, like this would be like the dream job for me, is just having my own brand where I make all my own clothes, but I also do all the hair and the makeup. Do you think you would do consider like the cosmetology program here? Yeah, I want to do that next year. I would recommend that. One of my favorite art projects at Concord High School, I taught here for a long time. It was a fashion show, and you had to create the clothing out of trash, like recycled mm -hmm. and trash. Oh, my gosh. Like the stuff that, like, you know, tin can skirts and newspaper dresses, and it was amazing. It was really, really. But it just combines all that layout and design and creativity. So you're here teaching special ed teacher, yes? Yep. yep. So do you have a vision? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, all the help you need and all the clothing donations and all the money that put together what you would need and what would what would it look like it would look like a thrift store where the student population as a whole frequently accesses it so that there is no stigma so that students feel cared for they're given what they need if you think about what a senior year is like so not to scare you but it's like a thousand dollars or something crazy like that between your senior picture and your yearbook and applying for colleges and so being able to save that money through thrifting, saving money for students and giving them what they need, it would look like win activities that focus on sort of those domestic arts that we don't have in the school anymore. So sewing and upcycling and, and doing all of those really great things that I know are happening out there at colleges yes. and bringing that to the high school. It would look like partnering with one of these schools, the colleges, so that maybe we could Zoom once a month and talk about what they're doing and how we can make it applicable to us. Right. It would look like lots of extended learning opportunities. So being certified in English, then I would do an English one. But I can see us doing one 
in you know early childhood education or you could do a whole environmental piece on the yep. production of clothing and how clothing is mm -hmm. discarded and what happens when mm -hmm. you return things. I read an article about when you return, when you order like on Amazon or you know those every week, every month you get a box of clothes, right? And you return it, just return it if you don't like it. Like 75% of the returned brand new unworn stuff gets tossed because it costs too much to hire someone to process it. So they just toss it. Mm -hmm. So now there are nonprofits that go to those companies and take all the returns that they're not going to mm -hmm. resell. And they thrift them and get them out there. But so I did a shoe fundraiser, Funds to Org, it's called. They have to be wearable, but they, they'll take anything. And they do the same thing. Certain shoes they send to island countries that don't have shoe stores. And so a pair of running shoes that I've run my 500 miles in and I'm ready for a new pair, somebody in a rural community would wear for five more years because they're wearing them, you know, on a dirt road back and forth to work or whatever. And, and just the reuse, reuse, reuse. Wow, this is wonderful. This is exciting. So what I want to tell people who are listening to me or watching, we have really three distinct generations. I mean, I graduated from this high school in 1981. That was a long time ago. I'm redoing my house right now. We knocked down a closet that we didn't know was there. And there were like just four hooks and it was a coat closet and four people lived there. You had one coat. Everyone had a hook, a hook. And you look in the closets and you had your underwear hanger and your Sunday dress hanger and your everyday clothes. Like you had four or five things and you just wore them until they wore out and then you got new just a different mindset now. But I like the fact that we're all talking about something that we are invested in, excited about. And really, other than this, we might have nothing in common, but I'll walk out of here with like, you know, two new friends and her up the street. This has been amazing. So what I want to say to anyone that's listening is, if you're near Concord, if you're within an hour of here and you're listening to me and you have a house full of clothing that you no longer want, bag it up and throw it in your trunk and come visit Barb and bring it to my house and I can get it to these people here. If you live far away, I have listeners that live all over the country, call your local school district, call a high school, see if they have a thrift, a thrift program in, the, in your school district. Lots of school communities do. Schools are very different now. It's not just where you go to read and write. It's where you get fed. Sometimes it's where you learn to brush your teeth. It's where you're really taken care of sometimes. So find, find your local school district and see what they need and see what you have to give. So is there anything you guys want to say, like to close up? I think it would crush the economy, but I really do wish that everything was recycled. I want sewers to know that there are other ways to get fabrics than just going to Joanne Fabrics and buying a bunch of new ones. You can go to Thrift to Vintage and they will have an entire section of just fabrics that you can go crazy in. With the stuff that we have, the same designer, you might have three different size pairs of pants from that same designer that are different sizes, same style. It's like the design industry is, is trying to make us feel bad about yes. ourselves. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to have a healthy body image right. at any weight, I'm getting to learn something new about you too. And that's wonderful. Yeah. That's what I want the next generation to. We shouldn't be made to feel bad because... We have to get our jeans at pennies or that we can't wear that new style because our tummy shows or whatever. Thinking about last thoughts, we are on social media. So that was a question I meant to ask. Thank you. Instagram, it's chs.sustainability.thrift. These will all be in the show notes as well. Yeah. So. so that's the Instagram. And then for the old folks, we do <laughs> Facebook as well. Well, <laughs> then they're our best donors. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. So that, I think it's the same thing. So I'll, I'll get you the information. Yeah. And is there an email if, if elderly folk that might donate mm -hmm. their, you know, their estate's worth of clothing? Yes. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine? You know, an estate sale. May would lose her mind. My email is jspidel, like the watch band. So J-S-P-E-I-D-E-L at SAU8.org. Well, this was awesome. I feel excited to declutter my house and get rid of some clothes. <laughs> It's a process for me. I do a little bit at a time. So Milo and Ada, thank you so much for just sitting right down and having a conversation. Jen, as always, it's fun to hang with you. Do something good for yourself today. After you've taken care of yourself, do something nice for someone else. And then have a good day, everybody. Hey, thanks for listening and supporting the podcast. Feel free to leave a review and share my stories with your friends. Please reach out with your own stories as I love connecting with my listeners. If you would like to get to know Molly, head over to mollybfoundation.org to see what she is all about. 
If you want to see what I'm up to next, you can find me on Instagram at barb underscore 444, on Facebook as Barb Higgins, and at my website, a thousandtinysteps.com. And while you're there, sign up for my newsletter, a weekly way to find out what's up in the life of Barb Higgins.